Hello. In this video, we're going to do a calculation together where I take scientific notation that has two different exponents and I add it together. Um, now, this is going to be a little challenging, but you'll see that it is kind of uh, basic once you get used to the whole concept of scientific notation. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have to take the units from this particular addition and convert them into units that are actually usable in our class. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's say we just done an experiment, maybe in your chemistry class or something, where you have 5.5 .5 times 10 to the 12th nanograms of material. And let's say that material, that's sample one, and let's say you have sample two, two and you're going to add it to that, you're going to take maybe like 6.2 times 10 to the 13th nanograms and that is your sample 2. Sorry, I keep moving this. I don't know why it just keeps doing that, but it does. Let's move it back up here. All right, perfect. So we have these two samples. Let's make this G a little better. So we have two samples, and we're going to add them together. Now you may just say, oh my goodness, Mr. Shaw, uh, these are big numbers, they're kind of confusing, but you'll find out that it's, it's for all size numbers, it's, it's about the same. Now, let's talk about a little bit of the, uh, the annoying things that are going to happen after the addition. Now you see that we're in nanograms. Now we've talked about this in class and in other videos, that scientists around the world don't use nanograms in their calculations. They, in fact, use kilograms. So we're going to have to find a way to take these nanograms and convert them to kilograms. Now, if you look at your reference table, you'll see that you have all these prefixes in the bottom left corner of the first page. And in that same uh, chart, there are the uh, 10 to the power uh, values for each of those. And converting straight between prefixes is pretty much impossible from that chart. You need to go to a value that has no prefix. So this particular action right here is going to be impossible. We're going to have to instead take our nanograms, convert them to grams, a, a quantity that has no prefix, and then we can convert that quantity to a value that has another prefix. So we can convert that to kilograms. So once you see, after we add these two together, we're going to have another task ahead of us of converting these values, the one value, into kilograms. And again, we're doing that so our data could be shared with other scientists, maybe in another country, or maybe just down the hallway. Oops. Let's erase this for now, though. And let's focus on our first calculation. And that first calculation is just simply going to be adding these. Now, adding scientific notation requires us to have common exponents. Now, you'll see this one has 12, and this one has 13. So we can't add these right now. But what we can do is we can change the scientific notation. So what I'm going to do off the bat is I'm going to either add one here or subtract one here. Now, I will choose to add one here just because uh, that's my personal preference. But you can do either one plus one. Now, imagine you and your friends, you have a friend, and they have cookies in their hand, and you have cookies in your hand, and there's no other cookies outside of what's in your hands. If your friend gains cookies, you therefore have to lose cookies. So if this number gets bigger, this number has to get smaller. And we make it smaller by moving its decimal point. So our decimal point was there, and now it's here. So this new value is 0 0.5 five times 10 to the 13th nanograms. Notice the units are going to be on every number. In this class, I try to have numbers on or units on every number because it communicates what that value actually is. And we're going to add that to 6.2 times 10 to the 13th nanograms. So, here we go. We've got two values that have now a common exponent. That means we can add them, and we simply just add up the coefficient. The coefficients, plural, sorry. So we have 6.2 plus 0.55, and you'll get 6.75. That's the first step. The next step is simply to just write your base and your exponent. Now, the exponent does not change. Also, the, the unique thing or the interesting thing of note 
is that the unit's not going to change either. Okay, we're done with the first hurdle. Now notice again we have nanograms. We cannot use these in scientific calculations or communication. We'll have to convert it to kilograms. So let's take a look. Let's start off here. We know we have nano. So let's look on our reference table. So take a second now. Look on your reference table. Look for nano. Okay, hopefully you found nano now and that you've seen that nano is 10 to the negative ninth. Okay, now the easy thing to do, and this is what I want to get you in the habit of doing, is saying that this actually means 1 nanogram equals 10 to the negative ninth grams. And that's an equation right there. Those two things are equal. Now the numbers may seem different. This number obviously seems much larger than this number, but the units are what matters as well. So just like if you said somebody's 100 feet tall, that means they're much bigger than 100 inches tall. Now, in this case, though, if you said that somebody's 70, or let's say, uh, let's say 60 inches tall, if you said somebody's 60 inches tall, that's the same as saying that they're 5 feet. Notice that the one number does seem much bigger, but they're actually equal. And that's the same in this case as well. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take this number here and apply a converting fraction to this, a transformative fraction. So we're going to take our 6.75 times 10 to the 13th nanograms. I'm going to make my little fraction here. I love these guys. I love my parentheses. Here's this. Now remember, what we want goes over what we have. So what we want again, we're going to want grams. We're going to get rid of this, the prefixes altogether. And what we have, oh, I'm going to have my units here. What we have is one nanogram. Okay, some interesting things are going to happen that hopefully you're aware of. Now when you do this, you'll notice that in your denominator you have nanogram. And this term has a nanogram. So it's going to be like dividing by nano nanograms. And it's going to cause this to cancel out. Then you'll notice one on the bottom. Now the denominator is pointless. But you have 10 to the negative ninth on top. You're going to multiply that by this, uh, your number of nanograms from the previous section. So you're going to take your 6.75 times 10 to the 13th and multiply it by 10 to the negative ninth grams. And what we'll see is this is uh, going to be the multiplication of scientific notation. And you'll see that your exponents are going to add together. So what you'll get is this. 6.75 times 10 to the 13 plus negative 9 grams. And you'll see that you get a final, final answer for this section, for this section only, of 6.75 times 10 to the 4th grams. Okay, excellent. The interesting thing though about physics is that we don't actually use grams for calculations and communication. We're actually going to use kilograms. So this is an incomplete answer. We need to get it into the kilogram format. So let's look at our reference table again. Look over at your reference table. Let's find kilo in the bottom left hand corner. Kilo. It's K and you'll see that kilo is 10 to the third. Now again, I want you to get in the habit of saying, okay, I see kilo, but what I really see is one kilogram equals 10 to the third grams. One kilogram is 1,000 grams. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna take my value from the previous section that the, the that is in the, term, the unit of grams, 6.7, 5 times 10 to the 4th grams. And I need to convert that now, so I'm going to put my transformative fraction here. And uh, we're going to be ready to go. I'm just going to put my W up here and my H down here. And that's my want over my have. And it, some mathematicians may be confused by this. These are just notes to myself of what I'm going to do here. So I have grams. So in this case, which is going to look different than the previous case, you'll see that you end up getting 10 to the third grams, and you'll end up getting one k.
kilogram on top. So now I'm going to make my equal sign go down this way a little bit. I'll, I'll remove this. Oh, wrong button. So let's put my uh, equal sign. Let's put a regular equal sign here and I'll get rid of this. Hopefully you guys are understanding what I'm saying. Okay. So now we've got our equal sign. We've had this. Let's let's do the calculation. So we'll see that one times anything doesn't matter. Now you'll also see, interestingly enough, that we have grams in this term and grams in the denominator, so they cancel out. And now this time, strangely, you're going to see that we have a, a scientific notation in the bottom, so in the denominator. So it's going to be the exact same as dividing, multiplying this term by this term is going to be just like dividing by scientific notation. So what you're going to end up getting is 6.75 times 10 to the fourth minus 3. So I'm minusing these two, I'm subtracting these two exponents. And I'm not going to forget my grams. You're not going to get a check for that. I'm just taking my time. So you'll see uh, we have this as our answer, but let's uh, just write it all the way out one last time. You'll be getting 6.75 times 10 times 10 to the first, and that is kilograms. Okay, thanks for listening in.